History shows that no country stayed on top forever, 100, 200 years at the max, and then they peak and go into decline. So I presume we're no different from anybody else. Uh, that's, but one of the problems with history is people don't learn the lessons of history. You know, we had a president recently who didn't know history. If he did know history, he said he was smarter than history. I know I'm not smarter than history, and history is very clear. No nation and no currency, by the way, because they sometimes go hand in hand, has stayed on top forever. So America is now the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. We have troops in over 100 countries. There are people who would say that we're overextended financially, economically, militarily, and it looks like they might be right. Uh, so yes, no, I worry. It's not a good time to be young in America because what the young people are going to inherit is mind boggling. I've got two teenage kids and it disturbs me. It's good to be old, but I don't have to pay. I don't have to pay for all of this. You know, I get the benefits. They're borrowing a lot of money, spending a lot of money pretty well. I'm old, okay, do it. <laughs> it helps me, but it doesn't help the future. A uh, hundred years ago, Britain was the richest, most powerful country in the world. There was no number two. 50 years later, they were bankrupt. Literally, the IMF had to fly into Heathrow to bail them out. So it can happen. It has happened. It often happens. And the symptoms, the money printing, the, the kind of problems you're talking about. I don't think it'll happen in 2001 or 2021 or even 2022, but it's on the way. And my experience and my observation is that all of this money printing, it has to go somewhere, but it takes a long time to build a bridge or a factory, but it's very easy to go online and you buy as much of anything as you want. And that's what's happening. Everybody has a lot of money in their pocket. There is a lot of money around and it's going into financial assets. Will that last forever? It never has, but you say, maybe it will. Maybe it will this time. Uh, the history shows that it's very clear. There have certainly been periods when stock markets in various countries have done extremely well, but it didn't make people rich. What really counts is making people a lot of money in an international currency so that you can go and buy a watch or a car or a loaf of bread or whatever it is you want to buy. Uh, Washington says that this is transitory. And you know, if you believe the head of the central bank and the secretary of the treasury, then you don't have to worry. This, everything is gonna be great. Look out the window, everything is gonna be fantastic. No worries, no worries, no worries. I happen to be of a different view. First of all, the US stock market has gone up, what, 10, 12 years without a serious problem, uh, uh, other than some short disruptions, but nothing serious. That's never happened in American history, and maybe maybe it is different this time. Janet Yellen says, don't worry, we have solved the problems. We won't have economic problems again. She's got degrees from two Ivy League universities, so maybe she knows what she's talking about. I happen to know she's wrong. Uh, we will have problems again, and when they come, it's going to be horrible. 2008, we had a problem because of too much debt. Since 2008, the debt everywhere has skyrocketed, skyrocketed by gigantic amounts. So it would be my view that the next time we have a problem, it's going to be the worst in my lifetime, given that the debt is so, I mean, I don't, that may sound like some kind of wild statement, but I look out the window, the debt is there. The debt goes higher every day. I know what it caused in 2008. It's got to be worse next time around. Eventually, of course, we may have, well have hyperinflation. Uh, Britain ended with not hyper like Venezuela, but very serious. And the value of the currency went down 80% against the US dollar over a few decades. That's pretty serious stuff. If yeah. you happen to be a British citizen, I doubt that we will end in hyperinflation quickly. That's usually towards the very, very end of a decline, of a long decline. And Venezuela had been declining for a long time. Zimbabwe was in decline. You know, Zimbabwe at one time was the richest country in the British Empire. It's been a long way down since then. They learned, Mr. Mugabe learned how to ruin the country, and he did. It took him decades, but he totally ruined it, and it ended in wild, wild inflation. 
I don't think we're going to have it that quickly uh, in the U.S., even if we're going the right the way of Britain. Uh, don't panic yet. But it doesn't mean we can't have serious inflation and a decline of the standard of living and a decline of the value of the currency, and we probably will. History is pretty clear. That's what happens. Uh, Social Security will be paid. You may not be able to buy very much with, with your Social Security, but you will be paid. I mean, in Russia, they still pay the Soviet retirement obligations, but it doesn't do you much good. So the question is, that kind of default, I cannot see that happening in the U.S. However, the value of the money is certainly going to continue to decline. As I said, the British pound went down 80% against the value of the U.S. dollar, which replaced it as the world's reserve currency. I'm sure that the value of the U.S. dollar is going to continue to decline. Everybody watching this knows that the dollar is not what it used to be. It depends on whether you're buying bread or gasoline or anything. It's not the same and it continues to decline. And they're not on your side, as I told you. They want to keep their jobs. Well, I don't like saying any of this, by the way, except for the fact that I'm old. It's good to be old. It's good to be an old American in yeah. 2021. It's not good to be a young American in 2021. Well, I mean, these people don't understand much about the world. And they, all they care about is keeping their job. In their minds, their position is keep my job, keep my job, keep my job. They don't care about your job. They don't care about me or my kids or their jobs. They want to keep their job. And the way they know to keep their job is to burn a lot of money, spend a lot of money, and keep interest rates down. They will do their best. But what will happen is eventually, the market will say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've seen this movie. We know how this ends. And the market will say, we're not going to play your game anymore. Then it gets out of the control of the central bank. And that's when you have serious, serious bear markets. It will be the worst in my lifetime. It's going to be the worst in your lifetime, too. I don't say that with great pleasure. I just say I have to deal with facts. There always have been people who come out of these things better off than they were before, and it's sometimes rich. People came out of the collapse in Germany in 1920s rich. Some people came out of the American Depression very rich in the 1930s. Most didn't, but if you get it right, of course, you can do very well. I own silver and gold, and I plan to buy more uh, sometime in the future. My timing is never very good, but I will definitely buy more of both because before this is over, both are going to skyrocket. Mrs. Yellen and Mr. Powell say, no, don't worry about it. leave gold and silver alone. You don't need it. You don't, that's, a, that's antique, that's archaic. Well, I'm an old peasant, and I know, all of us old peasants know, when things go wrong, we want to have a little silver over in the closet. We want to have a little gold under the bed, because we know that when things collapse, gold and silver will help you. It won't take care of it, will help you. So I am buying both, and I will buy more. I'm also buying commodity indexes, because by definition, if commodities go higher, that's inflation. I mean, if the price of rice goes up, that's inflation. So I own rice. I own agricultural uh, commodities. I own all commodities through, through an index because by definition, if they're going to drive up prices, those will benefit. Um, as I see the world, bonds are clearly a bubble uh, all over the world. Bonds have never been this high in the history of the world. So I don't think I would start with bonds unless they're a special situation. 